Welcome to Michael's Kids Club Winter Workshop. Today we will make a beaded penguin keychain. We hope that you join us for all 12 days of merrymaking. Enjoy! Hello! And today we are going to be making this super cute penguin keychain, or it could be a backpack pool, whatever you want to use it for. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is going to be some cording. So we have, I have, um, this package right here is what we are rec recommending for this project. And you're going to want this cord right here that's fifth one down. Now you can use any of these, but this is the one that, that I recommend you using or the black one, either one, the white or the black, this style. It's kind of a, kind of a plastic kind of feel. And you're gonna need 72 inches of that. And I have a little knot in mine, so I'm going to unravel it. There we go. And then you're going to also need some pony beads, the mini, the mini, the small, four by seven. Now you can use the larger ones if you would like, but your keychain is gonna come out much bigger. Okay, so what we want the small ones for this project. Um, and more specifically, Unfortunately, we don't have these in the individual set, so it comes in the one big pound bag, and you're gonna need about 54 of the light blue, 76 of the white, 16 orange, and eight black. Um, so we have for the, the beak and the feet or the orange, the eyes are the black, uh, the body is the blue and the white kind of combined, okay? Then you're going to need a key ring, and you're gonna need some kid scissors. You can print out a pattern like I have done right here, or you can just look at it on your computer, whatever makes it easier. And a ruler to measure out your cording, okay? So as I stated earlier, we are gonna need 72 inches of your cording. So if you wanna go ahead and measure that out, that would be, if you have a ruler here that's 12 inches, that will be six times that one ruler. So what I would do is, you know, one, two, three, four. Oops, I got my knot again. Five, six. Doesn't have to be exact, but roughly that's what you're going to need for this project. So if you want to go ahead and measure that out, give you a few minutes to do that. And then we are gonna start with our cord and our key ring. That's the first things we're starting with today. So once you have your cording, I'm gonna match up the each end of my cording and follow along to try to find the middle. So this is the middle, so I have a little loop here. So I folded my cord in half to find the middle. And then I'm gonna do what we call a lark's head knot. I'm gonna take this um, fold and I'm gonna put it through my keychain. So if you can see here, my keychain, my loop is on one side and the rest of my cord is on the other. And then I'm gonna take this loop and open it up and I'm going to thread my working ends through the loop while holding onto my keychain with my hands down here so it doesn't get, you know, doesn't unloop. And then I'm gonna tighten and I want to move it off. See, this the opening of this key ring. I'm going to move it off of that. And I'm going to tighten that up. Keep that as tight as I can. I'm going to pull as tight as I can. Now, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to flip this around. Now, it is going to loosen up a little bit until we get some beads on there and get this moving. But that's okay. It doesn't have to. You can tie it. Like, if you want to, you can tie an overhead knot underneath it to help kind of hold it in place. But then that overhead knot will be there when you do your pro, you know, at the end, which, you know, is no big deal. I think it just kind of helps keep it in place. I'm gonna pull both sides and get that up there and that'll hold that in place. Okay, so that's just a that little tip and I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in there. And then really the most of your, the, the, the making of your penguin, I'm gonna put our penguin, actually I'm gonna put our pattern in here. I'm gonna kind of scooch it under that. So that way we can see our pattern. 
And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these up for up the top. I'm going to work down. Now you can work up if you want to, but for this video, I am actually going to work from top down. Okay. So I'm going to first, I'm going to thread four of the light blue beads on either side. It does not matter what side you choose to start with, but you see there's two, sorry, you see that there's two cords coming down. And if you want to tape your keychain, your this right here down, that is another tip. And I am going to do that. So I'm not fighting, fighting that, that keychain moving during this video. But that's a little tip you can do. It's just a little piece of household tape. Tape it to your working surface so it kind of keeps it in place and then we'll remove it after a while okay so i'm going to take the end just one end you'll see that there's two ends that come off of your keychain i'm going to take one end and i'm going to put four blue pony beads onto my one side of my cord okay and then I'm gonna pull it for a little bit. I'm not gonna go pull it all the way up yet. Then I'm gonna take my other end and see how we, we, we threaded them through this way and it's exiting this out the left side of mine. And now I'm gonna take my left cord and I'm going to thread it through each of these beads. So I have it coming out the other side. I'm gonna do it, you know, just kind of slide them around. So then I have it coming out, exiting out the right side. So if you see now I've got, let me pull this a little bit so it's easier to see without all of this excess cording here. So now you can see I've got, I've got this cord right here coming out, going in the left side and out the right, and this side right here coming in the right and going out the left. And then I'm gonna pull them tight. I'm just gonna kind of get it to where it's a little even up there at the top. So it's even at the top. Now it is going to move a little bit until we get more on there, but don't worry, it will, it will flatten out once we get a couple of rows going, okay? So now my next row, if you can see here on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beads will need to be strung. And this is the light blue. The LB is what I have on here is light blue. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight on here now, okay? So now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my other side, my other end, and I'm gonna string them through because I went from, I went from my, from my right cord, I went through, the, into the right, out the left. So now I'm gonna take my left cord and I'm gonna go in the left and out the right, okay? So in the left. And out the right. And I'm just gonna work them, work them across. Make sure they stay on that first one, which is why I move it on to the cord a little bit longer so it makes it a little bit easier to maintain them on that cord because if you do it with just a little bit of a tail and you're not paying attention which it's easy to do when you're concentrating on getting these on the second cord you don't want it to come off the off the first cord if it's too short okay so and then now i'm going to find my exit cord here on the right on the left side and pull these up here and I'm just pulling them slowly so my cord doesn't get tangled. And then I'm gonna push these up here against this and you can just work your cord so that they're nice and straight. And you just have to kind of, like I said, in the first couple of rounds, you're just gonna to have to work your cords so that they stay even and straight. And then as we add more, See my cord up here got a little bit off here, so I'm just gonna work it to where it's even. And then once that's done, I'm gonna work my next row. And it's easier to work the less you have on here. So you don't wanna pull it too tight, you just wanna get it nice and even here. 
There we go. It's about close enough to even there. My off the top's a little bit off, but that's okay. Okay. So now I'm going to go to my row. Like I've I've, lab I've labeled these. So you've got one, two, three, four. You know, all the way across, and then A, B, C, D. So if we were looking at this one, that we could say that's A six. Now in this case, we don't really need that detail, but it is available if you want to on a grid. Okay. So now we're going into our third row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten light blues. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and count them out. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That way I don't have to think about it when I'm putting them on here. So just like all our other rows, all of our rows are gonna be, I mean, the weaving is the exact same all the way through. It's just the colors that we put on each row, okay? And so I'm just putting ten blue of the light blue I'm just being specific because on the blue, because we have a B on here for black and I don't want us to get confused. So LB is light blue in our legend. And I just noticed I didn't put a legend on the pattern, but that's okay. I think we can, I did the color coding. I think that makes it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so like I did earlier, I just I, you know, moved it up on the cord a little bit. Then I'm going to take our left cord and I'm going to go in through the left so it exits out the right. Okay. So remember maintaining that my my cord stay on the or my beads stay on the first cord. I'm just going to keep on beading. until I have all of them on both cords. One more down here. They like to slide around and get that on there, okay? And then I'm gonna take the, and then pull the cords. Remember, I go kind of slow, a little bit at a time, until I work my way up to the top. I'm gonna get these a little even here. There we go. See, now I'm, I'm kind of starting to take, starting to take form. Okay, now I'm going to grab a drink real fast. Thank you. I'm going to start with my next row, my D. So I made two, two blues. One, two, three, four, five, six whites. Oh, there's two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to kind of put them in order. They don't have to be laid out perfectly, but it does help. And then two blues. Now, if you want to, in the beginning, lay them out on your pattern, you can do that. My pattern got a little warped with the glue when I attached it to a little frame here to make, to be a little fancy. And it got a little warped with the glue, so it's kind of, it's hard to do that. If I put them on there, they'll slide around. So, if you just, you know, you don't, like I said, you don't have to print out your pattern. You can do it online and just look at it on your computer or on your phone. I like to print it out. It just makes it a little bit easier for me. But whatever works for you. So on this one, remember I have two blues, six whites, and then two more light blues, okay? Sorry, two light blues, six whites, and two light blues. And like our other rows, I'm going to slide these through. And it will take a few minutes for probably more like a minute to get them all through. So I can, oops, let's see, there we go. We got three on there. See, I think it's easier just to go one, one, quick one, 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 than trying to do multiples, just because it's hard to see if it went all the way through and then some of the ones you already worked on didn't go through. And yeah, no, you'll see what I'm talking about when you're threading these. It just makes it easier just to one, one, maybe if you're getting, feeling a little confident, you can try two, but I'm sticking with the one method just because it makes, makes it easier. And in my mind, faster. Not that we're in any kind of rush. Okay, so I'm pulling this tail a little bit. Oops, it got wrapped around my pattern. Okay, so now I'm gonna slowly Work these beads up and pull on each side. Okay, there we go. 
And I'm going to tuck this under here since I'm starting to get a little bit further down the pattern. Okay, so now we're going into the fifth row or row E. So I need two blue light blues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight whites this time. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then two blues. So I'm gonna stuff my whites right here in the middle, all my white beads in the middle, put two a light blue on each side. Okay, and you can you'll notice I'm going by the same side every time. I'm starting on my right side. And you do not have to do that. You can start either side. You can mix and match however you want. It's not going to make a difference at the end of your project. It just matters how you put the beads on. The order, rather, you put the beads on. To help keep our pattern correct. So we have our penguin at the end of our project. I got that one kind of rolled at the end of my finger okay so now i'm going to pull this in a little bit and again thread through one two three four Five. Six. I'm just counting all the beads. I don't know why. <laughs> Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. I must have started on an odd time because there's actually 12 on that row. So I'm going to make sure I have that right. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to slowly. Oh no. See, that's what happens when you grab the wrong side. So let me do this one more time. Put those in there. I grabbed the wrong cord. That's why it's important to go slow. I think I was getting a little fast for my own good. I'm just doing one at a time. Now, like I said, you can use the larger beads if you want. If you have the large pony beads and you want to use that, your penguin's just going to come out a lot bigger. And that's okay if you want a large penguin, you go for it. Now I'm going to get the correct end this time. And I'm going to slowly work these up. There we go. Oops, oh no, I lost, I just hit my camera. Let me get just one second to get that camera back and in, in set correctly. Sorry about that, guys. Let me make sure I have that right. I think it looks good still. Okay. So I apologize for that. Okay, so now our next row, we're gonna start getting interesting now. We're gonna bring in some other colors here. So we have two blues. One white. Two blacks. Two whites. Two more blacks for the other eye. Penguin has some big eyes. One white. And finish it off with two light blues on the outside. So just for grins, I'm going to show you going the opposite direction. And because our beads are the exact same order, it doesn't matter which end we start with or which side of the beads. But I'm going to go this side because... It's, I have them set up in the order that I want them in my row. So it just makes it easier to make sure I have this right. Five, 
for stringing onto my cord, okay? So we have our cords on, our, our, our beads on. I'm gonna string it over a little bit or move them up a little bit. And then I'm just coming from the opposite direction. And again, I'm right-handed, so this is a little bit awkward for me, but that's okay. Just wanted to show you that it does not matter which side you start on or which side you do your, slide your beads on from which side first and which side second. It all comes out the same right way. If you put your, make sure you just put your beads in the, on your cord in the right order. That's all that matters in the end of this project. Okay, so now I'm gonna slide these guys up just like we have in every other row. And I'm gonna do a quick check on our space on here. Looks like we're still doing good, but I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. I'm gonna move my beads to either side. That way you can see a little better. Okay, so now the next row it's very similar. So we have one blue, two white beads, one light blue, two white beads, two black for the bottom of the eyes, eyes first eye, two white beads, two more black beads. I, I put extras just in case in my containers of each one because I did not want to accidentally have one be drop or fly across the room and have to stop. So that's why I put a little bit extra of each one in my, my little bowls here and end with one blue, okay? So now I'm going to go through and get these guys on here. On the cord, just like every other row. So the nice thing about this project is it's very repetitive. There's not a lot of complication. It's just a matter of following the order of our pattern. And you will see very quickly if it is, pattern is off because you, it's kind of instant. You can see what's going on. And then I'm going back in with my other side. So I tend to move things closer to my face as I'm threading in here. So I'm trying to make sure I keep it down in the middle so you guys can see what I'm doing. Ooh, I got three. Oh, I got three at one time. Woohoo! It's a small little celebrations. Okay, so I'm getting those in there. Uh oh. Drop those down, which is okay, but. Doesn't make it easy to reach when I'm trying to get these all threaded through my cording. Okay, got it. Okay, so now make sure I find the right end here. Yes, I did. And I'm going to slide those up. And every once in a while, you know, you can always make a good check and make sure that everything looks right on your pattern. Okay, so now we're going to go into the beak, which is lots of fun. So we don't need any more of the black beads. So I'm going to move those out of the way and just kind of scooch these up. Okay. So now we're going to go into, we need one blue, three whites, four oranges. Picture came across a little yellow in my pattern, but O for orange. You can do yellow if you want yellow. You can actually do any colors if you want. If you don't want to do light blue and you want a pink penguin or a purple penguin, you go right ahead and choose your penguin. Your penguin can be any color you want him to be. Okay? So now I'm going to start doing the same thing. Thread all these on here. Putting them in the middle is easy to see, but it is also easy to get knocked around. 
So hopefully I can stay pretty steady with these beads being in the middle here. And get them all threaded on here correctly. That bead has some plastic weirdness on it. I'm gonna take that off. It just It's just from the factory sometimes that that happens. Sometimes there's a, a few imperfections and not that my pink one has to be perfect, but if I can see something like that that would make it easier for me later to go, oh man, I wish that wasn't there. I'm gonna go ahead and fix it now. All right, so let's do our double, or I guess our threading back through. I think we are about halfway through our penguin. And that's just taking a guess here, looking at it. So it's not super difficult. This penguin was created fairly simple to get you introduced to the weaving and pattern and following a pattern, which is a great skill to have. And once you're once you've learned how to do this penguin, it'd be fun to see what else you can do. You have, you'll have a lot of pony beads left over, and and a fair amount of of um, cording. You can start making your own patterns, design your own patterns. Okay, the next one we're gonna need, and we'll come back to that conversation in just a minute. Two light blues, one, two, three, four white beads. Four, let's see, I'm gonna move these up here because I don't know if that's how that looks on the, make sure we're in the camera here. Two oranges. Um, oh, did I do that? Nope, that's right, one, two, three. Four white, I thought, thought I got off a row. Four white beads. And two light blues. So these two little light blues are part of his like wings on the outside. I'm gonna thread those on there. Picking them up two at a time just because it makes it a little bit easier for me. There's a little point of his beak. Kind of a flat point, but that's all right. He's a cute little penguin. Okie dokie. Now I'm gonna go back through on the other side. I'm gonna line them up. I find it easier just to line them up and then push the bead through it. And then instead of trying to get the, you know, push the cord through each individual bead, push the bead over the cord tends to be a better and easier way to, to do this. Ooh, I got two on that one, yay. Ooh, I'm getting good, I'm pushing two at a time. But again, one is perfectly fine. Just makes it, make sure you get them all in there. Find this end here and push these guys, slide these guys up. So it, this on this row, you'll see that we come out a little bit. Hang on, let me get that even there. Because when we get our next row in, it'll bring those down better. So it's okay if it's like that, it'll, it'll, it'll slide in better in just a minute. Our next row, we have two blues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten whites. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two blues at the end. This one I'm not gonna line up perfectly. It'll make it a lot easier for me just to slide these guys in.
Get all of these on here in the right order, which is super important. Slide them on a little bit further on, uh, into the cape, into the cord. Line them up, slide them over. I know I keep saying the same thing over and over and over, but that's really what this project is, There's a lot of repetitiveness. And I believe I've said that already once or twice throughout this video. I hope you're having a lot of fun with our camp this, this year. Winter Workshop Camp is so much fun. I just, I get so excited to help develop some of these projects. We have such a great team. Okay, let's see. Oh, and like I said, we we're coming back to the conversation about doing doing some. Oh, oh, I was like, where's my other blue? He got way up there. About your own patterns, which we, why don't we pick that up in our next row? Since here we're about to slide this up and then count out our next row. There we go, it kind of gets that in there. So those are his little wings that are kind of out. Now we're gonna start bringing them in. So we have one blue, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is that right? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven white beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and one more on the opposite side okay so back to the conversation about your own patterns yeah you can you you're gonna have a lot of beads left in your in your 100 or well, your one pound bag and you'll have plenty of cording left in your variety pack of cording to play with to come up with your own designs you can do a reindeer you can do a wreath just whatever you want to do. And if you do some of those things, we would love to see what you do. So have you have an adult help you get a picture of it and post it up on our website with the hashtag, or I'm sorry, post it onto, you know, share it with, with us hash, with the hashtag, um, make it with Michaels learn with michaels hashtag learn with michaels we have a couple of different tags then we have um hashtag um oh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that this that kids the kids club one because i don't know 100 percent what it should be and i'll apologize for that in advance i actually can probably get it here really quickly and yes it's hashtag Michael's Kids Club. That is the Kids Club hashtag, which is part of this program here, the Winter Workshop. So you have three hashtags. I'm going to say them one more time. We have hashtag Make It With Michael's, hashtag Michael's Kids Club, and hashtag Learn With Michael's. So any of those. We would love to see what you're creating, whether it's your penguin you made today, or it is something else that you developed along the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, if you take your learnings, let's start with one light blue, and do ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one blue on the outside. Yeah, and you can apply the learnings you did today and creating your own pattern and your own design. You can do letters, that would be cool. All kinds of stuff. And what I did was, I love Excel, Excel. And so because Excel is on a grid, that's how I created this pattern. So I went in there and made, made a pattern so I could see how I wanted to put my beads on and then I did my beads. Now you don't have to do it that way. You could just take a piece of paper 
um, with markers or crayons and just kind of make X's so you know like this is the colors you want on each row. Or you can just, what I like to call a kamikaze crafter, which I tend to be a lot of times, and just start beading and see what you come up with. Because that's a fun way to do it too. So we're, his body's tapering down a little bit. Don't worry about the beads kind of flopping around. They'll smooth out once we're all done. Get all these beads here. They like to go down and be ready up there with their home next to their penguin. But I need them to stay up here with me for just a little bit longer. And we can finish this up. Pull that in here. Let's put him down. Yeah, so we're starting to taper down a little bit. Two more rows. This one we have light blue, a white, three oranges, one, two, three, a white, oops, three oranges, one, two, three, a white, and a light blue. And our cords are running low. That's good. Because that means we did not waste a whole lot of cording when we cut our cord. And we're getting his little feet on here. That's what the orange represents in this scenario. Slide that over a little bit. Don't have a whole lot of cord to work with to do some sliding around. But that's okay. As long as we have enough for our last row, we are doing good. And if you don't want to keep your, your keychain taped down, I just find it easier so it's not flopping around so much. Your little penguin's not flopping around. Then we're doing good. Okay, find our end. Put that in there. And then our last row, we have a light blue, a white, two oranges, two whites, two oranges, one white, and a blue. I apologize if I'm off screen a little bit there because I'm getting down to the bottom. I'm just gonna slide these on. And again, I'm following my pattern. So I can get these last guys on. Two whites. Two orange beads. One white bead. And finally, one more light blue. Now let's slide it through the other side. And again, one bead at a time, or if you've gotten gotten it down a little bit faster, you can do multiple. So when I first started, it was tough for me. First started in, in just in this project today, it was tough to get more than one going through there. But as I've progressed rows, it's gotten easier. And I've been able to push a few more in there at a time. Okay, so here is our cute little penguin. So now you can do a couple things. You can tie this off down here at the bottom if you want to, like tie it down here. What I like to do is I like to go through this row here and then tie a loop. And I'm gonna do that one more time and go through that row and I'll show you on the other side slow also. Okay, and then go through this little loop here and then bring that up there. And then I like to see if I can thread this back through. Might be a little tight in there, so I may not be able to do it, or I can only do it through one or two. And that's okay. 
If I can do three, then I'm pretty happy. And then I'm going to cut that end off. So that's in there. Okay. Now this end again, I'm going to flip them over because again, I'm right handed. So it makes it easier. Just flipped them over. So I'm going to go through this loop here, this little tie. Between those two rows and I have this loop here. I'm going to slide my end through that loop and then pull that tight. I'm using my fingers to kind of pull that knot tight. Then I'm going to do it again. I'm holding that end here. Open up. You can just open up the rows. That might make it a little bit easier because it'll slide down. So it's through there. Put my cord through that loop again. Knot. And then I'm going to slide it back through. If I can get that knot out of the way. So it'll let me slide this through. And let come through there. And again, I'm going to go through the next couple of beads. Like I said, if I can get three, that will make me super happy. And if you see what I'm doing, I'm kind of pushing the bead up and I'm pulling the cord down. So I'm trying to open up a little bit of space in that, in that bead. I can push that cord through easily and then I'm going to nip that being careful not to get my other bead there and there is my penguin I'm going to remove the tape here and again that's just a tip tape is not something that's absolutely necessary move that out of the way get all of our stuff out of the way here and here is our penguin and I had him turned over. Now it doesn't matter the side. You know, it's nice thing about this is as he flips around on your backpack or your keychain, he flips. He's the same on both sides. So thank you so much for crafting with me today. Hope you have fun with all of our camp classes. Have a good day. Thank you.